Alright guys, welcome to this video. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen you guys, but that's alright. It's been a bit busy with things, uh, working all and studying as well. I've been studying for Linux Plus. I know you guys have been studying hard, but I do have a little practice quiz for you guys that are studying for 1102, so that's great. We're going to get right into this one. So without further ado, let's get right into this one. Before we start, I just want to say, uh, if you guys would please take a moment to like and subscribe. Uh, please like the video. We are almost at 200 subscribers, which is actually kind of crazy. Pretty cool. But without further ado, thank you guys, and let's start. So, which Windows feature allows you to restore your computer to a previous state in the event of a system issue or error? So, we have system restore, disk cleanup, task manager, or control panel. Now, you can take a moment to pause and think about your answer. Uh, my answer is going to be system restore because disk cleanup is basically just a, a cleaner for your disk. It's a disk utility that basically just cleans up junk. Uh, you can also um, defrag uh, hard drives, which is basically just uh, resetting segments of a hard drive in case when you uh, delete things they just kind of have like blank spaces in them so it just defrags it and makes it all organized again uh, control panel it's basically like complex settings uh, we already know that if we have been using windows for a while if not it's just like a complex windows setting where you can control a whole lot of things such as devices uh, language settings things like that and task manager we already know if we've ever used task manager that control alt and i believe it is shift or tap i forgot the hotkey for it but you can get to it from control alt and sh um escape and you could use it to end tasks as well as see uh what kind of resources are being used such as cpu and ram by other programs but i'm going to go with system restore because you can restore your system from a previous state if you have a virus or something you use system restore to fall back on a previous state that hasn't been infected or if you just messed up something on your system and you want to go back perfect for that so number two what is the purpose of the bios or basic input output system in a computer so the most likely answer for this one so we're going to read them off manages the computer hardware to store user data to control the computer's cooling system or to perform firmware updates. So, uh, the best answer for this one for what is the purpose of a BIOS is to manage a computer's hardware. So basically it creates, uh, basically what the BIOS is going to do is it's gonna create a, um, a way for the operating system and your hardware to communicate basically. So we're gonna go with uh, manages the computer's hardware. Now, number three, which type of network device is used to forward data packets between different networks? So we have switch, a router, a bridge, or a hub. Little networking question here, but a pretty easy one. I think you guys can handle it. So let's see here. Now, if we're looking at a switch, so basically what a switch is going to do is when you have devices plugged into a switch, uh, a switch is basically like a intelligent hub. So it could send and forward packets to a specific device plugged into it um, from the switch there. So you could basically just get, um, it could send specific packets to a specific device that is wired to it. Now, a bridge is basically going to connect multiple local area networks together to create another uh, whole network basically. So it's gonna, it can connect one local area network to another and a hub like i said it's like an unintelligent unintelligent switch so a hub when you have devices plugged into it is it's basically going to broadcast any traffic that comes into that hub to all the devices instead of just one specific device and a router is going to be our correct answer because a router routes packets from one network to another that is how your computer uh, wirelessly is going to communicate with the outside network or the world wide web so we're going to go with router. Now, which utility can be used to check the integrity of the Windows system file and replace any corrupted files? Now we have task manager, we have system restore, SFC, system file checker, or disk cleanup. Now, this one's kind of a dead giveaway. 
I should have uh, at least taken the system file checker out, but I just left it in just to, you know, give us some leeway. But the answer for this one's going to be system file checker. It checks the integrity of files, uh, any files that are supposed to be there and any files that are not supposed to be there. For instance, say you have a rootkit um, and you need to check and see if a file is meant to be in the boot order of the operating system, you use this file checker to check or replace corrupted files. So we'll use this file checker. And number five, which of the following is a type of virtualization technology that allows you to run multiple operating systems on a single physical machine simultaneously? So we have VPN, VLAN, hypervisor, or VNC. So the correct answer for this one is going to be, well, first I'll give you guys a little second to think here, but it's going to be hypervisor because a hypervisor is the type of virtualization technology that allows you to run multiple operating systems on a single machine simultaneously. You can run multiple uh, operating systems. Like here, I do have a uh, virtual box installed. If I just pull it up here in just a sec, this is a virtual machine here. I have sent OS here that I've been using to study uh, Linux Plus, which is a pain of a exam, but that is basically a form of a hypervisor. Uh, VPN, that's just a virtual private network, just to connect the network to a network. Um, I know a lot of you guys do know VPNs by like all those Nord VPN ads that you may get on YouTube. <laughs> But anyways, the VLAN, Virtual Local Area Network. Uh, this is basically a virtualized version of a local area network. And we have VNC, which is basically um, an RDP for Linux and Mac OS systems. So it's a virtual networking computer. So it's basically how you can um, have a remote GUI of somebody's computer not through RDP because we know RDP is just for Windows. You might want to remember that as well for your exam. RDP is just for Windows, but you would use VNC to remote into a Mac OS or a Linux system. And oh, forgot to uh, ch <laughs> check the answer there, but there we go. It's hypervisor. All right, number six. What is the purpose of a Mac or media access control address? So Mac address. So first one to identify a device on the network to translate domain names to an IP address to manage internet access for users or to protect against malware now the answer for this one is going to be to identify a device on a network uh, this is going to basically give us a unique identifier to a device it's basically a long string of a uh, I know it's letters and numbers, the MAC address is a long list of, not a long list, it's kind of like, I forget how many digits it is, but if you want to find the MAC address of a, um, a device, you could type in ipconfig all on Linux, um, I think, oh no, it's ifconfig all, I believe, or ifconfig a, but basically it's just a unique identifier to a device on a network. To translate domain names to IP address, this is going to be DNS, our domain name system. Uh, let's see, to manage internet access for users. Uh, now that could be a multitude of things, but that's just a throw off question here. And to protect against malware, that's going to be an anti-malware, like if we have Windows Defender or McAfee or Norton, anything along those lines. So it's going to be to identify a device on a network. Now, question seven, which Windows feature allows you to view a history of system events such as errors, warnings, and information messages? We have device manager, task manager, event viewer, or control panel. Now, we went over most of these already, so if we do take a look at these answers, and we see here the explanation allows you to view a history of system events such as errors, warnings, and informational messages. Event Viewer is going to do just this. It's going to give you uh, errors that come up, uh, any type of warnings for your system, and informational messages. So it's going to be Event Viewer for word number seven. And number eight, which type of malware is designed to spread to other systems without any user intervention or action? So we're getting to a little scary stuff here. So we have Worm, Trojan Horse, Adware, or Rootkit. Now, 
the correct answer for this one is going to be worm i believe uh <laughs> haven't selected it yet but i'm pretty sure it's worm but it, let's see so a trojan horse actually does need user intervention or action uh if we don't know what a trojan horse is what a trojan horse is is basically a virus type or malware that is disguised as a certain program so it's typically the best way i can kind of explain it is if you download pirated software and it looks like the software everything checks out um and then all of a sudden like your cpu is ramping up and you kind of just installed like a crypto miner uh that would be a trojan horse or a form of a trojan horse uh rootkit uh does need a uh, user intervention um uh, that is going to be a type of malware that is directly installed on your on the root of your system or you know the boot files of the operating system so that's very bad you don't want that because it's very tricky to get rid of there's really the only safe way to get rid of a rootkit is just to re reinstall everything and reinstall the operating system cleanly uh adware this is just ad pop up uh malware uh so a worm is going to be the best one a worm propagates by itself through networks and number nine what is the purpose of dhcp or dynamic host configuration protocol so we got some fun port stuff here guys so to assign mac addresses to network devices to convert domain names to ip addresses to automatically configure ip addresses to devices on a network or to encrypt trans or encrypt data transmitted over a network now the best answer for dhcp or dynamic host control protocol if you think of the names a little bit it's going to be to automatically configure ip settings for devices on a network so it's automatically going to give uh devices an ip when they join the network and remember also if they're not assigned automatically an ip address and they're not assigned a static ip which is an ip that doesn't change uh they're going to be assigned an apipa address um that i believe starts with 169.254 i believe it, it's been a while since i've taken the exam but an apip address does start with 169 so every time you do ever see 169.254 uh, i believe uh, just know that that is a local address or a pipa address and number 10 which windows utility can be used to configure startup programs so we have device manager system configuration control panel or task manager now the answer for this one is going to be if we see the word <laughs> configure in the question the answer is going to be system configuration you can configure um all types of things such as startup and things along those lines but that was the end of our quiz there i hope you guys enjoyed it and i hope you learned something as well uh, i'm gonna try to get back to making videos consistently I, I would say because i do have tuesdays and sundays off so i'm gonna try to record a video at least every tuesday and sunday so you guys know but just remember to like and subscribe the, for the video if you guys did enjoy it and i will see you guys next time thank you